Hi guys, welcome back to this video. Um, in this video I wanted to show you um, some accessories that I made a couple of months ago. Um, basically you have seen this probably on YouTube or in several versions. Um, this is a tap and die holder uh, for the tailstock of the lathe. Um, and in my case it has an um, Morse taper 3 here and this uh, part is just a straight 20 millimeter shank. And what I can do here is I have a holder that uh, can accept the dice here. So you basically um, insert them here, um, secure them with the, uh, with the grub screws and then that one here is free floating on the tailstock. So what you do is uh, you put the gate in very, uh, the lathe in a very um, slow gear uh, coming right up the, to the material you wanted to um, put a thread on and then you hold with your hand and it's basically threading on itself and when the pressure is too high or you can't just let it go and it spins freely on the tailstock adapter here. And um, here you can see another version. That one is basically for the uh, tapping. So um, it accepts some pellets like this. And then you can um, just screw them in there and uh, secure the different tap sizes. But I discovered one problem with this. Um, I made this adapter because I had uh, this collet here uh, laying around basically and a lot of collets for it. But um, basically there were two problems arise. First of all, uh, the collet size I had was around, I think eight millimeter was max. So I was not able to um, use lots of tap taps, so was basically very limited. Another problem is, um, what I forgot to do is, I should have uh, milled some feature in here to grab it because it's very hard to um, tighten the collet without holding it somewhere. Um, I came up with an idea because basically um, I found uh, these adapters on eBay or uh, to be more precise, I had, um, I got some of this, um, it's a build quick change uh, holder. I got some of them with some uh, stuff I bought, they were just included there and uh, I never gave it, gave it much, much thought but um, I discovered that if you look on eBay you um, sometimes get really lucky and get the actual holder here for only one or two uh, euro each so that's a very reasonable price. Usually um, you would they go around 50, 60 even euro even higher. But I was lucky and I found some of those holders and I thought actually that would be a neat addition. So basically instead of using the collet holder like this, um, I wanted to make an adapter, just like a mock-up, for example, like that. And then it's free floating again on the tailstock. So uh, what I can do here is, this is, I don't know, maybe if you haven't seen that, that's basically just a holder and it's fixed. So it's a quick changer. There are some um, uh, balls in here and they're uh, basically locked if you engage it like that. And here as well, these ones are also uh, have some, some kind of fixed memory. So you, there's only one position where it actually locks uh, here and then you basically fix it like that and it's fixed. So my plan is, um, because luckily I was able to uh, get all the holders for all the sizes and needing, needing basically starting from M3 up to M12, the normal sizes. So I will add some um, holder next to my lathe and I have all the sizes stacked up here. Just give you an example like that. And then I can basically quick change between the different gear sizes. Uh, what I'm going to show you in this video is how I'm going to make um, the actual holder for it. So basically, um, if you have a different size, some people uh, use this ER collets. So basically, you can just um, use this video as a uh, as a reference how to make the holder and what actually what kind of um, if you make a tap holder or die holder doesn't really matter because the basic steps are all the same. In my case, I'm just gonna um, mill it to size inside and then I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna press it in, I'm not sure yet, because actually I wanted to leave this holder original, usually I probably could cut it down like 20 millimeters or so, 
but I don't know um, if I'm actually going to use it that often or if it's practical. So I always have the original holder uh, if I decide not to use it or if it's not going to work the way I expect it. But basically, so um, in essence, it, this one is going to be a little bit longer for me, but you can see um, Depending what are you doing for the for the die holder, basically um, you only need some space here for the die, and all the rest um, is the travel that you have. So if you uh, basically the whole length of this adapter um, is depending on what actual kind of uh, travel length you want to have on the on the tailstock for the thread. So let's meet over on the lathe. I'm going to show you a quick uh, little bit how this thing is actually going to work and uh, what I'm planning to uh, make. So now we're over on the lathe. As I said, the Linen has a Morse Taper 3 um, tailstock, but basically you can build this holder also for smaller lathe, um, depending on what kind of tailstock you have. So that doesn't really matter. Uh, all you do is now is insert that firmly, so that's stopped on the taper, and then you using that can use that, and it's, as you see, it's free floating. And once uh, it's actually engaged in the material, it's kind of get pushed forward. And when I'm done, I'm just let go and it spins freely on the holder. So uh, the holder itself for in the tailstock um, is made of mild steel because uh, I have to ram it into the tailstock and the aluminum is probably too soft here. But uh, this, uh, the guide here, basically aluminum is fine because there are no, no cutting forces whatsoever. And it also basically just rotating very, very slowly here on the, on the adapter. So that's not a problem. One thing here you can see, um, that's another reason why I wanted to make um, the build solder. It's uh, too large here. Um, this uh, collet adapter was uh, also quite long and I didn't want to cut it down, but as you can see, it's sticking out too far and I don't, I don't really like the look here. So what I'm doing is um, I'm going to make uh, the actual hole a little bit longer for the build solder so it's just covered in there. But as I said, you can use it as a general um, reference how to build it, so you can build your own holder for whatever um, tap or die uh, feature you want to use it. This is the stock I prepared. Uh, as you can see, it's a little bit longer than the last one, so basically give me around 3 centimeters more um, length to um, press in the, the build holder. Um, that's basically all about it. Dimension wise, this is uh, 40 millimeter stocks, stock. For me, um, it turned out that um, this is a good size to prep. Uh, obviously, if you have uh, uh, larger hands, you might uh, find a larger stock more comfortable, but around 40 to 50 millimeters probably is fine. If it's too long, you can really, if it's too, too large, you probably can't crib it anymore with one hand uh, secretly. So just find out what, what, what you like here and uh, use the stock you want. Uh, basically, the only dimension that is critical are the, uh, but the only two dimensions, so to speak, are the 20 millimeters for, um, for the tailstock holder, so that it's gliding here uh, without uh, binding and obviously without too much play. And another size is uh, to make it a little bit undersized to press in to hold or to hold it firmly. What you can also do is just use grub screws but um, I, I try to make it a good fit, so I press it in, and if it's too loose, I can always add grub screws later, but I think uh, we'll manage. The stick out is a little bit longer than I liked, but uh, I think it's no pr problem. I keep the cutting forces slow, and so it will be no big deal. Basically, what I wanted to do now is uh, some basic turning operations uh, here and here. And um, then I'm going to drill, uh, drill it uh, with 18 millimeter and bring it up to size with the boring bar to make it a nice fit to the holder. Then afterwards I'm knurling it and at the end I'm turning it around, drill it from the other side uh, for, the, for the build holder. And, and this part will not be knurled because I have something different in mind. I want to add a, a feature to um, Add an additional holder, maybe it gives more strength for larger threads. I'm not sure yet, we'll see.
split it in two steps. Um, first 30 millimeter and then uh, 18 and the rest I will do with a boring bar. Now I repositioned the tailstock. I'm shooting for around um, 75 millimeter depth of uh, the hole, but um, it's basically determined because of the length of my boring bar. And it's already a very, very large stick out, but the boring bar is full carbide. So if I take uh, light cuts, I will get away with that. But um, yeah, more than that is probably uh, gonna be. These are not um, the best drill bits in the world here, but um, basically they have a step here so that they can insert it in the chuck without uh, having to mount a larger chuck. And I give it my best here and try not to ruin, <laughs> to ruin it. But you can see that it made the job much easier um, to trade in two uh, steps because going in with, uh, I mean the lathe had the power to do it, but um, especially with chip ev evacuation it's always better uh, to drill in several steps so um, that there is some, some clearance here already and you don't have to uh, get evacuator chips, all the chips at the same time. Here you can see um, the hole a little the hole pattern. It's already this is a very very rough uh, drill out hole. Um, as I said, the drill drills are not um, not the best, and that drill depth is also very very um, deep. So, but that's why I'm here with the boring bar, and I'm gonna clean it up nicely. Um, I'm gonna take very very um, light cuts just to make sure. But basically, <laughs> uh, my end stop here is um, that I can. Go, I do it by eye, but I can, I can see I uh, drilled enough. Drill it deep enough so that the boring bar fits in completely. So all I have to do is make sure that I don't hit the um, the work with uh, with the holder here. So that's all I have to care about. So there is no way that it actually will bottom out in this case. And that's basically what I wanted with the hole. Now I bought out um, the inner diameter with the boring bar, and what I'm going to do next is um, knurl the part. At least somewhere around there, the rest I will turn from the other side because I will mill some feature down there, so I don't need an earling. Um, what I'm going to do, I lower the speed um, and the feed rate, and I'm also going to add some cutting fluid. That should help a little bit um, to make a nice knurl. Now I'm done with the knurling. I think it came out quite okay. Um, this time I opted for a very fine knurl, so what I did was a lower the feed rate. And so it's basically just a, a very, very tiny pattern. But the grip is still very good, so I like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add three or four grooves. It's just an optical thing um, and to break up the space a little bit. Also one last thing about the 40mm diamond material is that it fits completely in the chuck so I um, have uh, less dig out by, in, when doing the second operation here. Now I'm gonna drill the other side. Um, what I realized uh, by drilling the first hole was that um, 
the 80 mm drill was wandering off quite a lot, so I had really trouble to keep um, a nice snug fit. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to do a um, 16 mm drill and uh, then will the rest with the other boring bars to get a really nice fit. Because I want to press it in, so I need uh, some tenth uh, undersized anyway, so 20 mm, 80 mm won't give me that enough. Uh, won't give me enough um, wiggle room there. As I said, I'm going to use a different boring bar this time. Um, this one is much sturdier, and um, I I think I will have enough stick out here to do around. I need around 50 millimeter. So let's see how far we can get in there. All right, change of plans. I um, decided not to go forward with um, pressing in um, the build solder because I realized once I brought it nearly to size that uh, it is a quite long uh, distance to um, press fit it in. And the worst thing that can happen there is that you get stuck halfway with the holder not going in anymore and uh, it risks ruin the part. So what I did was I um, aimed for a sliding, nice snug sliding fit. And now I will drill and tap uh, four grub screws to hold in place three grub screws and the fourth uh, Hole will also be uh, my hole for the for the holder that I'm planning a short uh, stubby holder so I can um, have additional uh, torque if I needed to. So this is the final um, part including the uh, holes. You can see here I aim for a very nice fit. Now I only have to tighten the four grub screws and it's uh, sitting there good. Uh, I also have the option to use a handle. This obviously is excessive, but just for demonstration to add a handle here to one of the screws and then I have more torque like holding it like this or like this uh, somewhere like here and then I can uh, tap bigger holes if I need to. But for now I will just add the grub, sc grub screws. And um, I'll uh, sh show you the whole thing with a little demonstration later. Here you can see the process of changing the tabs. Just put it down there, find the position where it locks, let it go, and it's locked there. You can also change that one out easily, simply like this, if you indeed break a tab or need a different size in the same holder. Easy as that. So, no more changing collets. Here's one last shot for the whole collection. This one here is for the um, collets. But as you see, as you've seen here, probably the builds change so much faster, and I think I'm not going to use that one anymore. So uh, maybe I use it on a different machine, um, and I will keep that, that one on my main lathe uh, because it's just so much easier, and I kind of like it. I will print, or well, not sure yet, uh, some kind of rack for all those um, small holders go in, and um, yeah. Line them up like that, and then I have uh, easily access to all of them. That one I probably obviously will keep because that one is for the die holders. Um, in uh, basically, what you also could do, you could use that one as a main holder, so to speak, and just insert the die part also here. Like instead of the builds, you could also insert the die um, die die holder and only use one main holder if you wish to do so. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. Um, I clamped the tailstock down so it's fixed and I can only move uh, the quill here for front to back. And here is my uh, new holder. You can see that one is spinning freely on the holder. There's some um, oil there for lubrication. But it's running easy because the finish wasn't too good so I can hear some light scratching. But the oil will help. Then this is the holder here. Uh, as I said, I will have a rack here with all the different sizes. This is now M6, hole is um, drilled M5. Just go like this. This is a quick change here. Here you go. M6 is in there. Now I bring the quill a little bit near next to the hole and then basically all I do is just let the machine spin really, really slowly. I think I'm gonna come a little bit closer here so that I don't have that much stick out. And then uh, 
All I do is bring it into the hole, let the machine spin slowly, and once I'm uh, in there good enough or the, the size, uh, the depth I want, I just uh, let go and it spins freely. So here we go, just have to change the gear of the machine. Let's see if that's slow enough. Yeah, that sounds good. So bring it in there. See, so hold it, hold it. Uh, if there is too much torque, I can just let go, grab it, let go, grab it. And once I'm done, I don't have to uh, thread it out by hand. I should just simply put the machine in reverse and do the whole thing backwards. So now we can see M6 bolt. Bolt perfectly. There are some uh, chips in there, obviously I would have to clean that out with uh, compressed air, but uh, just for demonstration you can see it works perfectly like this. So I think that's it. Thanks a lot for watching and see you guys in one of the next videos. Thank you.